I believe the Lord has something to say to you through this message this morning. So listen very carefully. Glory, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and the Lord bless you. The Lord will open you up to new opportunities and grace. The Lord will impart you with power that will strengthen you to overcome every obstacle in the name of Jesus. May the Lord turn your obstacles to miracles. May everything that stop you become, you know, become your stepping stone to greatness. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. This is Joseph Adenunga, the pastor of Prevailing Church, Bethlehem, South Africa. I'm here with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen and to encourage you as usual. Today I continue the topic which I started some days ago, which I titled Formula for Solving Difficult Problems of Life. Formula for Solving Difficult Problems of Life. Uh, you know, in some of those lectures, I was trying to look at some, you know, problems of life using uh, mathematical theory to explain to you how to solve problems. You see, in quadratic equation, like I said, which is something like, um, let me say 3x squared plus 4, 4x plus 3 is equal to 10. That is a quadratic equation. There are different ways you can solve that problem. Uh, but you see, when you try all the ways and you don't get the answer or you get stuck on the way, then you can use the formula. In those days when we were in school, the formula for solving quadratic equation, we call it, we used to call it almighty formula because we believe that once we put the necessary constants and variables into the formula, we get the answer in a given. You know, we just need to do our correct calculation, then we will get the answer. You see, when we put the formula, all we need to do is just to put the variables and we will get the answers. Hallelujah. So that is why we, we call it Almighty Formula. Now, today I want to begin to tell you the formula for solving difficult problems. And there are formulas, but one thing I want you to understand in mathematics is that the formula for solving quadratic equation cannot solve any other any other type of equation but quadratic. You see, you cannot use the formula for solving quadratic equation to solve problems of simultaneous equation, for instance. Hallelujah. So you have to understand the formula for solving one problem is different from formula for solving another type of problem. You know. So having said that, I want to say, I want to start by telling you the formula for solving difficult problems generally. Then I'm now going to get into the level where I'll begin to tell you formula for solving specific problems. And I'm going to give specific problems, marital problems, financial problems, and so on and so forth, you know. But right now, I want to begin to talk about formula for solving the general difficult problems that is general. So the first formula is the formula I call the formula of using joy. In the book of Philippians chapter 4, when you read from verse 4, the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say unto you, rejoice. This is a formula for solving any type of problem. It's a general formula that solves almost any type of problem that you may ever face in your life. You see, when God made us and the devil has been thrown into the earth, God knows we are going to have problem, and God designs some formula that if we apply this formula to our lives, all the problems that plagues our life is going to go away. Hallelujah. We're going to find solution to these problems if we can make use of God-given formula in the Word of God. And our textbook is the Bible. You see, the Bible contains solutions to problems. And I want to assure you this morning that there is no single problem that comes to your life that does not have solution. There's always a solution for every problem. When a problem comes into your life, it is because there is a way out of that problem. That is the reason why God allowed that problem in your life in the first place. And I want you to know that some people used to get angry with God when they have problems. No, it's not time to get angry with God. It's time to sit down with God and find out the way out of that problem. 
Because problem is one of the things that God made, that God permitted in our world to bring development to our world. Can you imagine our world 1,000 years ago? Can you imagine how our world was in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ? There were no, you know, such, you know, civilized, you know, uh, gadgets in his days. He didn't preach to the multitude using microphone and speakers. You know, he preached to the multitude using his voice. But today, technological advancement has come because we are seeking every day to find solution to problems of mankind. And the more the problem, the more advanced we would become. It's, in fact, problems bring advancement. You see, for instance, the problem of hearing has brought up different kinds of technology that helps with hearing aids, that those who cannot hear properly with the help of hearing aids, which somebody profile as a solution to the problem of hearing. And so every problem that comes have a solution. All we need to do is to take time and apply God formula to solving those problems and we're going to have solution. So the first formula I am introducing to you is the formula of joy. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. God wants you to rejoice always. It's a joy in your heart is going to make the problem to be softer. When the joy of the Lord dwells in your heart, uh, it's going to bring you to, you know, the level where the solution to that problem is going to come very cheaply. And remember the Bible says, in the presence of God there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are pleasures forever. Now, if God is in you, then there is joy in you. You see, joy is different from happiness. Happiness is something that you get when something happens. And that's why they call it happiness, because it's dependent on what happens to you. But joy is not dependent on what happens to you. Joy is on the inside of you because God is inside you. So when the Bible says you should rejoice, God is saying you should stir up the joy on the inside of you because God is inside you and in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forever. God is saying you have a responsibility to stir up the joy. You see, you can stir up the joy despite the problem. You can stir up the joy despite the difficult things that you are going through. You can stay up the joy despite the challenges that you have. I remember somebody who loved praising the Lord. She's a woman. She praises the Lord in every situation. You know, she, she's known as Mama Praise. But one day she got a stroke. And um, when she got the stroke, she fell down and she couldn't rise up again. One part of her was paralyzed. And when the pastor and everybody came to her, you see, they said, Mama, praise. And some people were crying. It was the left hand and the left leg that was, you know, that was working. And he, he lifted the, the left uh, uh, hand that was working. And he was shaking. She was shaking the left leg. And she began to worship the Lord. She began to praise. She began to praise. She said, hallelujah, anyhow. I'm going to shout hallelujah, anyhow. Even though I die, I want to die singing hallelujah. I tell you, as they began to worship the Lord. In that state of her stroke, the power of God fell, and she stood up upon her feet, totally healed, worshiping the Lord. You see, when you rejoice in the Lord, the presence of God comes to you, and when the presence of God descends in your place where you are, the problem of your life is consumed. I'd like you to know this is the, one of the greatest formula, the formula of worship, the formula of joy. You need to learn how to rejoice in the face of problems, in the face of difficulties, and you will see God's signs and wonders. Hallelujah. You need to learn to rejoice in the Lord. You need to learn to allow the joy of the Lord to well up from the inside of you. And we are going to see mighty signs and wonders. This is where I'm going to stop today. You see, the joy of the Lord, the Bible says, is your strength. Hallelujah. You must not allow the joy of the Lord to depart from you. 
What the devil seeks to do every time is to attack your joy and take your joy. If your joy can be stolen, if your joy can be taken, then the devil will win over you. The devil will have the upper hand. And that is why you have to make sure you guard your joy. You don't allow anything to tamper with your joy. Problems may come, but it must not affect your joy. You know, you know, so you need to understand this. May God help you to understand this. This is where I'm going to stop. Thank you for listening. I believe this has blessed you. I request that you, re, you, you rebroadcast this to get some other people blessed. And if this has blessed you, uh, I, I like you to just go more. There are more of our messages on our website, triggersforsuccess.com, triggersforsuccess.com. Go there and be blessed. Hallelujah. There's a donation button. If God has blessed you and you really like to be a partner with us, just donate whatever you can and God is going to bless you more. Thank you so much for listening. I pray that the blessings of God that makes rich and add no sorrow shall be imparted unto you this Sunday in the name of Jesus. Make sure you go to church. If you're in Bethlehem area, I invite you to our church, the prevailing church which is held at Kodison. Hallelujah. Come and let's celebrate Jesus together. Thank you so much. It is well with your soul. Once again, this is Joseph Adenuga, the pastor of Prevailing Church, signing out this morning and saying, be blessed and remain blessed.